This is the Mr. Magnetophone here. I've got quite a lot of stuff. Don't mind the styrofoam bits lying around. I've been packing a lot. <laughs> got these two cases here from these Voice of Music Reel to Reels. Those are tube. That is a little cassette player. It's a pair of Newmark speakers that didn't come in a lot. That is a Sony TC758, I think. This is TX3340. A lot of tapes. Uh, this is probably about 50 tapes. Including these very large carts. I don't know what I'm going to do with uh, carts, as I don't have a cart player or a cart recorder. So I'll probably sell those if anybody has any ideas. That brush on mirror, couldn't get anything to come out of it. Uh, it looks like it's getting power, but nothing moves on it. That one, um, it's really buzzing, or it was humming. No, it was humming. Uh, I don't know if it was a motor, really noisy, or if it was the... Um, or something in the amplifier. And that brush right there, down there at the end of the table, um, is having a problem with running continuously. If you depress the forward button and then press the start momentarily, it just won't run. You have to hold the start to get it to run. Then I've got my collection of vintage fans. I'm working on that one. The motor just sticks right out, or the, the shaft of the motor sticks out almost like a solenoid and just sits there every time you turn it on. I rebuilt the motor. I don't know why it's doing that now. Didn't do it before, now it's doing it. So. What a pain with all these projects. Uh, real quick. Got that pair of speakers as well with this. And I've got to find a new switch for this. For some reason somebody put the wire to that screw. And I think what they were doing was shorting these two wires together to get the machine to play. I don't know. So I need a new switch. All the tapes right there. Got a lot of cables. Didn't get any microphones or anything like that. Just a lot of cables. <laughs> uh, okay, reset the counter. Okay. If you look, these are pretty normal size buttons. But what amazed me were I've seen pictures of this machine. The VU meters are much larger than what it looks like in the pictures. And these buttons here are just huge. These three. I mean, yeah, my thumb's not even that wide. Seems like it's running a bit fast. I don't know. That tape's not mine. These don't even light up or do anything when that's in the two channel position. The output does vary the VU meter. Sounds like the tape's squeaking a bit. Sony PR150, what do you expect? That's probably one of the worst tapes in the market. Doesn't do the sticky shed syndrome, but it squeals like hell. And oh boy, is it squealing. I think 
these were supposed to be lights and somebody put screws in them. I don't know why. Maybe the screw itself lights up. I'll tell you what that's going to do. Uh, there's not too much tension. I was going to say, I'll kill your reel to reel. Let that run too long like that. And it's not like there's anything gunked up on it. By the way, somebody added these handles. Because this thing weighs a ton. Uh, uh, it's not like there's anything gunked up on that. I think it's clearer than the other position. Uh, you know, when it's just sitting uh, you know, right there against the tape's clearer than uh, non use of The pause light. Um, looks like LED and that doesn't work. And for pause, you can't just click again. You gotta hit play. Oh my god, is that squeaky. The problem is with the real table, there's still one problem with this machine. Is that, uh, does it sometimes? The real table slides forward, and then a, uh, a problem is with that is um, it just needs to be tightened down. But I screwed with this last night up to like 12:30, which is a long time out here. You know, typically, I don't work at night out here, and got it working, so that was good. Oh my god, it won't even move now. Ha! Huh. Well, if somebody wants to buy Sony PR150, you know, where to, uh, to get a hold of me at. What a bit of shiza. Oh my god. It's gonna be worse than any other tape in the market ever. See how good the brakes are on this. Nice. Just locks real quick. This still goes around a bit. Hmm. Then I've got quite a bit of basif in here, and basif was always. I never liked the sound of the LP35. I didn't ever think it sounded right, even though your machine was adjusted right for it but I've got these very nice reels I think these sell for about 10 bucks a piece and these are like the the older you know or the, I should say the newer formulation older is and I think they started making these in the 80s compared to that you know three spoke reel this was a 80s formulation same formulation but you know different reel, I think it's a uh, different color. I think it's LP35. Let's check this box. A brand new Studio Series before I drop it. <sighs> High density. Maybe it is different. Formerly, formerly LH Super. So I guess this is better than the other stuff. Huh, maybe this will sound okay then. Hmm, let's see. Tape speed, three and three quarter. Who would ever use this at three and three quarter? My god. If you're buying Studio Series, why would you use tape at three and three quarter? Doesn't make any sense. This machine alone will go up to, uh, I think it's 7.5 and 15 IPS. That Sony back there is 3 and 3 quarter and 7.5, and, and these are 3 and 3 quarter, 7.5. <sighs> Somebody had stuck. I gotta clean all these off. Stickers on all, you know, every place you could ever imagine on these. Hmm. 
Trying to think what else to say. Box of tubes. Uh, oh, the other thing is, I'm now selling the wire by the foot. Um, I've got 18-2 lamp cord, 18-3 black round service cord, and I'll be getting 16-2 white and possibly brown as well. Uh, probably I'll stick with white for a while as, you know, number 18 cords 10 amps versus 16, which is 13 amps. So there's not much of a difference. 3 amps isn't a whole heck of a deal for anybody. So I'll mainly stick with carrying this and just get some white 16 too. Just to have some 16 too, but to have some white as well. I think I'll take some purple power, see if that cleans up any of this. I heard that was good. supposed to be good. Um, i got to get new switches for in here. MCM should carry them. Just a little, I'll go with a little toggle switch instead of these stupid sliding switches. The problem was originally with this reel-to-reel -reel was that this... Uh, the back section of it that hits the switch had fallen off. Some of the electrical taped it and let it sit on the circuit board, which is dumb. I fixed that pretty quick. The bench roller was frozen in position. Took that all apart. Got that taken out. All you know, all the grease out, and t took care of that. Uh, it's gonna need a new belt. Which will be, I think, $8 from MZM. I'm selling those to belts for reel to reels for the TX series. I don't know all of them that they fit. I know it fit anywhere from the X10 to you know, the original reel to reels. So I do have those. X20 as well, that fit. Um, I think it fits this one as well. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Only thing I don't like about this reel to reel is they put mic inputs on the front like any other cheap reel to reel. I don't know why you'd do that. This is supposed to be a studio reel to reel. I don't think you're going to walk into some studio with um, four mic cords hanging out here and cables come up for these and it's just a stupid design. It really is. I think this was supposed to be a studio reel to reel, but actually went more towards the quad market. Or at least, uh, you know, for some time I think it would have, just because it's, it's like a quad machine so much. Um, you know, compared, you know, it, it's not a full studio machine, it, it's still, you know, somewhat consumer, so. Thanks for watching.